Back in 2021, I decided to work on my first commercial video game, a reimagination of beloved Flash games like Penguin Diner and Diner Dash. With modern 3D graphics, a more in-depth story, and quality of life features that would suit such a game if it was released today. Then, a few weeks ago, Unity announced some concerning changes, which, in all of its confusion, motivated me to explore new tools. After trying Godot, Flax, CryEngine, Strider, I landed most comfortable in Unreal. I'm not sure if it was because the blueprints were easier to work on at 1am rather than C-sharp, or if it was because Unreal had built-in systems I'd been programming myself in Unity for the past six months. It was probably the combination of both. But now, for the past few weeks, I've been working on getting the Unreal project up to scrap with what I had in Unity. And this is what I've done so far. So some of the first things I did in Unreal was of course the player controller, which was basically derived from the third person controller and then changing some of the um, camera techniques and systems to make it more top down with how I wanted it to be. And as well, the way in which tables and chairs spawned. One of the things I've been working a lot in um, Unity was getting um, furniture spawned correctly because the way that kind of the game works is that you get upgrades by just kind of selecting them in a catalog and and then they appear or kind of change in the levels layout. And so one of the first things that I wanted to do because I've had a lot of trouble uh, doing this in Unity was uh, spawning the correct object with the correct kind of attributes uh, within the level at runtime as well. That was also really important. Here you can see uh, the logic for spawning tables and chairs. It is as simple as checking, okay, what table is set to be the table right now? Uh, spawn that, give that the preview the material, which is the blue one. And then if we are at uh, the begin runtime, then we basically do the same thing, uh, but instead give it a different material. And so it can kind of switch between the two. And for chairs, it's a bit more complex. It's basically the same thing, but it's got a bit of inception. So we have the table actor, which has the logic for the table and you know the attributes we have for you know how many seats we want. And it's gonna have you know, what NPCs are there, what those NPCs have ordered, what state they're in. Mostly is gonna be involved in the table, if not the NPC actor themselves as well is gonna be managed for that. But then inside the table manager itself, we also have um, the chair, uh, actor as well, which does basically the same thing by checking, okay, what chair is selected or, you know, what, what would the player have as the selected chair? And that is the one that we spawn. It works. It's good. Now, the most complex thing I've probably had to do the past few weeks is figuring out how player interactions work. Now, getting box casts, basically ray casts, but in different shapes is easy enough to do in Unreal. And there's good documentation as well to, to show that. For me, it was figuring out how I wanted interactions to work and how I wanted to register those interactions. And so I did a lot of research on gameplay tags, which are kind of these newer tags that Unreal's uh, recently added. And because they're recently added, there isn't as much documentation or tutorials, and it's a lot more uh, C++ based than Blueprint based. Thankfully, I was able to figure it out in Blueprints. And I wanted to use this rather than the original gameplay tag because uh, it was a lot more predefined and you could actually have subclasses of things. So for example, you could have interactions and then subclass it being items and then subclass it being drinks and then subclass it being a specific drink. And so this means, for example, uh, with the player, if a ray casts with uh, interactable item, then it will grab the item. But if we're interacting with uh, a place setting, which is the actor that basically uh, is the placement we want that drink to be, usually in front of an NPC, uh, we can check, okay, what tag and like subclass of that tag do you have? Are you specifically this drink, which this player is looking for? And if that's the case, then it makes things a lot more easier and manageable, especially as um, I scope more outward to different items and objects that players can interact with. Uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, to manage that. And by not using strings and just typing out each tag, it also alleviates so much stress and probably confusion down the track when I misspell a word late at night. And so much like I was saying before the place settings, I managed to program that. 
and you can see here you can pick up this drink and place it in this spot. And these are two separate actors that do two different things. And one other important thing I had to make sure as well when making this was that only one drink could be placed at a time because you know there's also the ability if you don't tell it to uh, that you could just place drinks in the same spot. All of that was probably the most concerning thing for me the past few weeks in terms of is this easier in Unity than it is in Unreal. A lot of it was just reading through documentation and going through forums. I've actually been quite impressed how forums have helped me. Uh, a few years ago when I tried learning Unreal, uh, the forums were just not helpful and people were asking things that just, it, it didn't help me solve my problems where so far, so good. So we've got all that underway. Now the next few things I had to set up was basically the NPCs placing an order. Uh, and so I had to get them going to the table and actually being parented to the table, be acting as a child in the seat and then having the table referencing them. Having them select a drink randomly, I had to do things like data tables and uh, all these other kind of data driven things to you know have a list of items that they can order, a list of items that they have ordered from and then send that to the table and then get the player to interact with the table that would then send that to the kitchen, which would then figure out, okay, from the orders I've received, what ones need to be spawned at the location next. And then that's, you know, basically the loop back and forth. And so all this kind of progressed back and forth. I also did um, some redesigns of like icons and some UI images. I wanted, you know, you know the speech bubble that NPCs have over their head when they're ordering something. And of course the drink icon. I also did another thing randomly uh, was also the eye colors I wanted for the players, which I'll get into now as well. Because when looking at the behavior tree for the NPC, a lot of the stuff would be a lot more easily implemented if I had things like an NPC model with animations to go with it. But because my play model was so close to being finished um, before transitioning to this Unreal project, I decided, all right, let's get this play model in as well before starting the NPC models. And so it took me about maybe two and a half evenings of unwrapping. Uh, most things weren't too complex, so just a few weird things when I was using um, splines and bezier curves and all that sort of stuff to make hair flow and um, other bits of clothing look a bit more natural or stylized, whichever way you want to look at it. And as you can see here, after much work, I managed to UV unwrap the player model um, with two UDIMs or, or UDIMs. One for the player face, hair, skin, eventually eyes and mouth and all that sort of stuff. And another one's going to be for all the clothing. And so between now and the next video, I hope to um, get the player textured a little bit. Um, maybe do some rigging and have some basic animations. Fingers crossed that that is the case. Animating takes such a long time and I want to do it right. So that might not be within the next video. And if you're wondering, hey, this is a cool project. I'd love to support this and see this go further. I now have things like YouTube memberships, um, super chats, all that other monetization thing you can all do here on YouTube. So if that's something that you'd be willing to do, it actually helped me out a lot. And thank you to those who already have. Anyways, my name's Nathan. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next devlog.